Welcome back. The parents of a Michigan teen accused of killing four students at Oxford High School have been charged with involuntary manslaughter. And though it's rare, it isn't the first time a parent or guardian has had to face a judge for their child's alleged crimes. In 2000, a man from Flint was sentenced to two years in prison after a six-year-old boy who was living with him found a gun in a shoebox and killed a classmate at school. In 2020, the mother of an Indiana teen was placed on probation for failing to remove guns from her home after her son threatened to kill students and fired shots inside of his school. No one was injured. Dave Ehrenberg is a state attorney in Palm Beach County, Florida. He joins me live to talk about the charges Jennifer and James Crumley face in connection to the latest school shooting. Thank you for joining us. As we mentioned, the charges against the parents of a school shooter, they're rare, not unheard of. You were talking with Marnie a few nights ago about the fact that potential charges for the parents in this case would hinge on what they knew and when they knew it. So based on what we've heard from the prosecutor today, do you believe his parents should be charged in this case? And if so, why? Yeah, Kelly, I thought the prosecutor today laid out some important facts that would justify the charge of involuntary manslaughter. Remember, you don't have to show that they intended for this to happen. You just have to show that they acted so recklessly that they put others at risk. And the details are pretty damning. I mean, first off, on Black Friday, uh, the father took the son to buy the gun. And then on Instagram, the son referred to the gun as his new beauty. And then the next day, the mother posted on Instagram that mom and Sunday testing out his new Christmas present. And then the first day back at school on Monday, you had this very disturbing um, text or this, um, this image on his phone that he was researching ammunition to buy. And when the parents were called, they didn't answer. They didn't respond. And in fact, later on, the mother said um, to him that, hey, LOL, I'm not mad at you. Uh, you know, just don't get caught. And then eventually when the really bad drawings were discovered, the parents were called in. They knew about it, but not once did they ask their son if he had the gun or if the gun was in the backpack. They didn't search the backpack. They just let him go back to class. Okay, Dave, that's interesting. We want to ask you about one element of this. The prosecutor says there's a lot of digital evidence. You mentioned this, including text messages. She said after a teacher observed Ethan Crumley searching for ammunition on his cell phone during class and his parents were called and emailed his mother, Jennifer, you mentioned this, texted, quote, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught. Will those text messages stand up in court in your view? Yes, they are really powerful evidence. They show parents who should have known that there was a tr problem with their child, and yet they bought him a gun. They didn't secure it. And although there's no requirement that in Michigan that you have to secure a gun from your child, you still can't act recklessly. And it looks like they acted recklessly by allowing him to have easy access to a gun they bought for him. And knowing that he had done some really disturbing things like looking for ammunition on his phone while he's at school or putting this drawing that the teacher found so awful that it it was uh, it led to calling the parents in to a conference with the counselor. I mean, this drawing had words, the thoughts won't stop, help me. Um, they had a bullet with the words blood everywhere, and they had laughing emojis um, saying that my life is useless, the world is dead. I mean, after all that, the parents still didn't ask their son if he had the gun that they gave him, whether the gun was in the backpack. They didn't tell the school that he owned a gun. And so that's why the prosecutor charged these parents with recklessness, because it is an unusual charge. But these facts are particularly egregious. Now, you heard the sheriff weigh in about this. It is unusual for a prosecutor to announce charges before taking suspects into custody. Some were critical of that move. What do you say? Well, it was interesting when the sheriff was interviewed just a few minutes ago that he said, I wish we had known that the charges were happening or else we would have had eyes on them. And he raised a good point. Normally, in a situation like this, the prosecutor, before they announce that charges are happening, would tell law enforcement because it's law enforcement, not the prosecutor's office that have investigators that can put eyes on the suspect. At the very least, you want that suspect watched because you don't want that suspect to flee. And that's what happened here. 
So generally, before a prosecutor makes an announcement of a charge, they make sure that the suspect is in custody, or at least law enforcement is notified to make sure that suspect doesn't get away. And we heard the gun used was allegedly an early Christmas present from the suspect's parents. Is it legal to give a minor a gun in Michigan? Minor is not eligible to own the gun. Uh, there are some circumstances when the minor can use the gun at a shooting range. And the prosecutor at the press conference today was asked this very question, and she said there may be some federal gun laws that have been violated here. But under Michigan law, she did not see any particular crime that had been committed for that. But she instead charged the parents with involuntary manslaughter based on their overall recklessness. And it's a charge that could put them in jail for 15 years per count. There are four counts. And the fact that they are now on the lam, that they've disappeared, could jeopardize their pretrial release. Those parents, if and when they are caught, could lose the right to be free pending their trial. They could be sent right to jail. Now, I think this is a really important question. There's a lot of speculation about the parents tonight and their role in this incident, but bad parenting is not against the law. So how much legal responsibility do parents have under the law? Well, under Michigan law, there is no requirement for parents to lock up their guns. There are some states that require that, but not in Michigan. But they still can't be reckless. You can't know that you know, your child has mental health issues and leave a gun around for them to take to school. And that's where they're gonna get the parents because this is really unusual. You have specific evidence that the parents were told that the child was looking for ammunition or drawing these, these disturbing drawings showing bloodshed and killing people. And this is the kind of thing that would raise red flags in the minds of prosecutors because normally parents are not held liable for a situation like this. I cannot remember if there was ever a case like this where the parents of a mass school shooting were charged criminally. But this is different because they were put on notice. And not only did they not do anything about it, they seemed to enable him, giving him the gun, allowing him to go back to school, not telling the school that he owned a gun, not searching for his backpack. They just let him go back to class. And you see the tragedy that ensued. It sounds similar to what the prosecutor said today. Well, Dave Ehrenberg, Florida State Attorney, we appreciate your insight as always. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.